They chat daring her to do it, and she pulls her panties down. The other woman is also excited about all this. A man suddenly comes in, asking what's this ruckus about, but his son tells him they're playing a game, telling him to stop being so ancient. He doesn't like what he hears, and the girl stops him, saying that he should go and enjoy his life and leave them enjoying theirs. He crosses his arms, saying he'll teach them something else they can play. He tells them he'll teach them a real game instead of that child's play. One of them doesn't like being called a kid, and his son asks him what's he even talking about. He says these kids are not his real friends, but he disagrees. He wants to see if they'll still be his friend after the new play. He hurries him up, saying he's starting to bother them. He says he'll let them have a big party for a whole week if they win at his game. He got them interested. And he'll even put gas on his car and let his son ride it for the week as well. He gets so excited that he does a little dance. That's not all, he'll let them have an unlimited credit card for them as well. They're super excited and his son tells him to start it already. He says his friends will get those things as well, and one of them dreams of the new iPhone already. It sounds too good to be true, so his son asks what happens if they lose, but he says there'll be no consequence to them. Daniel wants to start this already, and he knows he's always anxious. He says they'll begin now, telling them to put their cell phones on the table. They weren't expecting that asking him what he'll do. And he tells them to put them on the table at the max volume and unlocked. One girl starts to get bored already with this. And the other one as well, saying that it seems pointless doing that. He doesn't have anything to hide, saying his life is an open book, and the other one says he doesn't want to play anymore and gets up. Gabriel tells him to come back and play with them. But Daniel says he doesn't want to play this weird game, saying he'll leave. The father suddenly tells them that they all need to play, that he'll call off everything if they all don't play. They all start telling Daniel to sit down, that they want all of those things, and that he has to play with them. He apologizes, saying he has a thing right now, and Julio asks if he's afraid of showing them what he has on his phone. He scratches his head, saying he's not, and Gabriel tells him to sit down so they can start this thing at once. He begrudgingly comes back and sits, and Joy starts hiding her cell phone among the couch cushions. Since he said that his life's an open book, he puts his down first. Daniel says he should flip it upside then. And Joyce tells him to put his own in the pile. Gabriel tells them to look alive and put them all on the table already. Joyce smiles and places a different one as well. Now the father says it won't be long, that they just need to wait for 10 minutes and see what will happen. Jessica's phone starts ringing, and she says she'll not pick it up, but they all start to hurry her up to answer it, telling her to put it on speaker. She answers it, saying she can't talk now because she's very busy, and a male voice says she forgot her panties and her payment there. They all stare at her, and then Joyce asks her why she hang it up, saying it was very interesting. He can't believe that's what she does when she says she's studying, and Julio can't believe it as well. She says she has two that her college is quite expensive and she's paying for it with that. Now Daniel knows why she took her panties down so easily. Gabriel tells her to rest assured, that he'll take his father's credit card and pay her college once he wins the game. He says they barely started and there is a message in another one as well. It's Julio's, and since he doesn't have anything to hide, he'll call the one who texted him. She really wants to see if he doesn't have anything to hide, and he goes and calls his friend, telling her to be quick because he's very busy. 
The female voice wants to know if Joyce got better from that rash that she got from Gabriel when they got together. He says he needs to go and hangs up. He can't believe Joyce told Julio about that, that he spread that news all over already. She can't believe he did that as well, saying that she told him not to tell anyone else. Gabriel's mad at her for talking about their relationship to other people like that, but Julio says that's no biggie, that everyone got a rash or something. She gets up, even madder, saying that he shouldn't have done that. He simply tells her to stop the drama, telling her to calm down or her rash will get even worse than it is. The father is enjoying himself, saying that it reminds him of when he played that with his friends. Gabriel pulls her by the arm and sets her down, but he's still mad at her. Suddenly, everyone hears another cell phone ringing, and Gabriel finds the one that Joyce hid among the cushions. She takes it from his hands, and he asks her why she has two. She says one is for emergencies only, telling him to stop snooping around. Jessica wonders if the emergencies are clients like the one she has. He says that he'll look at it now that they're dating and he can't believe what he sees. She has a dating app, asking her why she has it. She says that the notification is actually from a friend, not the dating app. He thinks that she must really take him for a fool, and Jessica stands up, asking what's wrong with having two cell phones. He says that she must think that's normal in her new line of work, and Daniel tells him to watch his mouth. She says he can say what she wants, but nobody cheated on her. She tells him not to worry about her, that she gets paid really well and she would never go out with him. She says she's doing this to pay for her college, not like him who sleeps with the English teacher just to get approved. Joyce pulls him up, asking him what's that about, and he tells her to relax, that he did it once so that he didn't have to take that class again. Now Julio knows why the rash and Daniel says that woman was nasty. Gabriel simply tells her to quit the drama, and she can't believe what he did, that he was complaining about her because of a message, that he's just as disgusting as that woman who he slept with. Daniel suddenly answers his phone, and a female voice says it's from the laboratory where he and Miss Joyce came to do the test, and that the result is out already. He doesn't remember what she talking about, asking her what test it is, and the woman says it was a pregnancy test, congratulating the couple on the good news that she's indeed pregnant, and that now she'll have to start the prenatal treatment. He can't believe he's going to be a father, and she congratulates him once more for that and then she hangs up. His father tells him to look at the bright side, that he's not going to be a father. He can't believe Daniel did this to him. And he says she was always at his house, that he could hold himself. She can't believe that, saying that he was the one who was always after her. Gabriel tells her to shut her mouth before he loses his head and Jessica tries to calm him down. Joyce says that she's not sure who the real father is and that they'll have to make a D and a test. He loses it. His father holds him down while he threatens Joyce. Julio is having the time of his life, but she tells him to shut up, that she doesn't want him to go out and spread everything that happened there to other people. He says he's not a chest to keep gold inside, and Jessica tries to calm him down once more but he tells her to leave, to get out of his house, and he turns around to Julio, telling him to leave. He says he'll go all right, that the bull is mad, but he'll be in everyone's text thread in a few minutes. Joyce is almost crying, saying that he'll tell anyone what just happened there, and he tells her that he's not the father, telling her to leave his house as well, and Daniel tells him to not talk to her like that, but Gabriel slaps his hand. Daniel and Joyce start making their way out of his house, and he can't believe what just happened, that he thought they were his friends. He asks if he knows why he did that, and he says he did it to ruin his life, but he says he did it so he could see who they really were. He says he only wanted to help him, that he needs real friends, not people who just wanted to use him. 
He says he's right, apologizing and thanking his father for it.